debate. Uh, we're looking at the fallout from Athens' worst uh, night of rioting, Greece's worst night of rioting um, in years. This following the approval by Parliament of painful uh, reforms, reforms that next will be going on to Brussels uh, for approval, perhaps on Wednesday. With us to talk about it from Athens, Alexander Theodorakis. Uh, he is a protester who was there, uh, uh, who was there yesterday evening. Alexander, who is a university graduate. Alexander, um, you uh, want to start up a business, but uh, you just tell our viewers maybe um, you're. Uh, finding it for the time being very hard to raise the capital. You know that you're going to have to turn to your family rather than to the banks. Well, it's impossible for, for uh, people my age to turn to the banks right now and hope to have a business going well because of the interest rates. If I want to raise money now that they probably wouldn't give me, I would have to pay 16% interest rates, which is unacceptable, and I will not even get into that perspective of, of, of trying to borrow money from a bank. All right. Also with us uh, this hour, Thomas Clough of the European Council on Foreign Relations, Marcus Kerber, who teaches at uh, Berlin's Technische Universität, and Craig Kapitas, uh, journalist and uh, author. Um, we were uh, talking before the break. Uh, Marcus Kerber mentioned that uh, the uh, uh, the Greek politicians' uh, past uh, misdeeds and what was interesting in the parliamentary debate that uh, took place over the weekend in Greece. There was a mea culpa from the mouth of Greece's former prime minister, confessing to sins that he says date back decades. This is the reality. This is our responsibility. I'm calling on all of you to think about this very seriously. I'm sure that we will pause to realize the historical responsibilities we have, and once more, we will take the right decisions for the sake of the country. Uh, let me ask you, uh, uh, George, how does uh, Alexander Theodorakis, how does that resonate when you hear George Papandreou? Uh, uh, it just sounds like uh, elections are coming and they need to, to clear out the mess they made in order to regain the, the elective power they could have. Craig Capitas. You know, there's a, I have to say this in Greek. I'm bravo, George. I'm bravo. Mm. We, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the, these folks from the past shouldn't even be given airtime. They are history. Going over this history does nothing but stall the debate into the future. The reality of Greece is that there are people like Alex, I know other young Greeks, who are in their 20s and 30s. Some of them even work in the Greek government, in the embassies, ministries abroad. These are really, really smart people with really bright ideas on how to fix Greece. But the old guard back in Athens, just like the old nomenklatura in Soviet times, do not listen to these people. Mm -hmm. They and, and, and this is the problem. If you want to know where Greece should go tomorrow to avoid this problem, then let's get Alexander there to mm. speak to the parliament and talk about his ideas. And, yet, and, and that's not more. what's going on. I couldn't agree more. And yet it won't be uh, Alexander who's going to win the snap election in April. It's going to be uh, the center right, which is uh, a part of that old guard, as you say, as you Precisely. suggest. But, but this is the, I couldn't agree more with your statement because the political class in, in Athens is not only us the tendency to be corrupt, uh, it's part of the Greek past. And the problem of bargaining with um, Brussels and bargaining with um, the IMF and the European Central Bank, the past, Greek's past, is negotiating Greek's future. And as okay. long as the Greek's past will continue to negotiate to bargain uh, in favor of the, the Greek future, there will be no future. There will be no future because these people have definitely lost all their legitimacy and if that uh, painful process we see on the screen has one sense, is, it is the sense of it serves the purpose of uh, replacing fundamentally all the nomenclatura, because it's a process comparable to the downfall of the Soviet system 
in that sense that there is no longer any legitimacy to be to talk in the name on behalf of the Greek people. Alexander Theodorakis, who do you want to be speaking for you uh, what, in, in, in those sit-downs in Brussels with the Troika? Uh, first of all, I wouldn't like Lukas Papadimos to be there, because if you remember well, he was the one who brought the euro here with uh, Kostas Simitis, so bringing him here now to save the situation. He might be a bright economist, might have worked for the greatest institutions in the world, but I don't really care. He was the one who created the problem initially. We, wouldn't, we shouldn't have get, got into the Eurozone. Now we are, we are in it and we bring back the, the person who, who worked into getting us into the Eurozone to, to save us, to save, to save the, the, fiscal, the fiscal situation, the economical situation now. It just doesn't make sense to me. All right, we talked about the, the, the Greek political scene. Let's talk for a second about the German one. Uh, the German finance minister outspoken over the weekend. Uh, Wolfgang Schäuble in an interview with uh, Welt am Sonntag um, saying Greece needs to do its homework to become competitive, whether that happens in conjunction with a new rescue program or by another route that we don't actually want to take. Cryptic Thomas Clau for perhaps they are leaving the Eurozone or a much um, bigger restructuring um, and default within the Eurozone. Now, there is a sense amongst many of the partners who've been negotiating with uh, the Greek interlocutors um, that collectively uh, the Greek political class hasn't, hasn't seen the light, if you like, sufficiently. And this is something which Schäuble says in that interview. Uh, and there is also a feeling that uh, the Greek state apparatus, uh, the civil service, the ministerial bureaucracies um, are still stuck, if you like, in many of the problems uh, or situations and inefficiencies, to put it mildly, uh, which are one reason why Greece got where it is today. Um, and you can sense that feeling of, um, expressed by many finance ministers in the last few weeks, of somehow the Greeks making promises and then not delivering, um, which of course clashes with the fact that if you look at the, uh, the situation for Greek citizens, their, 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 life, their, their living standards have dropped, and a lot of them go through enormous um, social and economic and financial pain. Um, they, they, but that loss of confidence and the ability of the Greek political class or readiness to deliver is, I think, uh, a, a worrying sign, because it, 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 it might herald a, 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 a form of disengagement, mm. if you like, and a collective preference on behalf of EU partners um, included, but, but including possibly even the IMF, of somehow letting the Greeks go um, because you don't have a partner uh, you can really deal with. And in that sense, the, the message sent by the Schäuble interview is a, is a powerful one and should be a wearing one for the political class in Athens. And, and it reveals very much a split in the government because Frau Merkel, the German Chancellor, always said uh, saving the euro um, is uh, synonymous with saving Europe. There is no Europe future without the euro. So if we come to a, uh, let's say, uh, unbundling of the Eurozone and, and Greek would be only one step, not of a domino reaction, but uh, of breaking a taboo, then she is really at stake. Her political future is at stake. Mm. Uh, finance minister can uh, modify his opinion, can change his opinion, uh, can organize a shift. This is the, the initiation of a shift towards a more subtle strategy of letting uh, Greece go bust either within the Eurozone or outside of the Eurozone. But this is a dramatic uh, sign that there is a uh, growing discrepancy be between what Frau Merkel thinks and what her finance minister and, uh, uh, might think. Perhaps she, he's, going to, he's going to be sacked because, anyway, he's an ill man. Uh, but just, and, uh, there was one CDU lawmaker who's quoted by the Reuters news agency uh, as saying that Greece is going to be the legacy of Angela Merkel at the end of the day. Well, uh, Angela Merkel has, st has staked, and I think rightly, uh, a lot of political capital on keeping uh, the Eurozone together. And uh, I think this is still you know, her, politically her top priority now, and rightly so. And I do think that the strong collective preference of the German government, including, by the way, the finance minister, who I, who I do not believe is going to be sacked, um, is to find a way to keep Greece inside the Eurozone. Um, but um, the, the feeling the feeling grows at the same time that although this is the strong preference, uh, it might not be possible to get there unless something more happens in Athens in the psychology uh, within the political class. Now, at the same time, uh, although Portugal uh, is in a sense in trouble, the situation in Portugal is radically different uh, because there uh, the, the European partners, if you like, and also the international partners do have the feeling 
that they have a responsible and competent interlocutor. So Portugal is struggling economically. Uh, the bailout package uh, is not going to be sufficient. Portugal is going to need further help. But there is the feeling that you have someone right. you can talk to. And on the issue of not letting uh, the Greeks on their own, um, the uh, opposition in Germany calling for more compassion this Monday. If you want to give Greece a chance of standing on its own two feet, then you have to support them now, so they can buy more time. If we don't go in a new direction, which includes more solid support of the Greek economy and of other countries in trouble, like Portugal, for example, we won't reach a sustainable solution in the long run. All right, those are some of the reactions out of Germany and... Um totally unrepresentative of the German population. This is the typical gossip of part of the political class who represent mainly themselves. Well, they still get elected, and mm -hmm. I think it's good for Germans not to forget that they were welcomed back in the community of nations after having perpetrated, you know, the most horrific the, the crime in European history. The Secretary of the Social Democratic Party has never been elected help. except by their own military. Well, the Greens this and the Social Democrats the haven't done so see, badly in elections. Francois, this is precisely the argument here. The humanity of what's going on in Greece right now has been forgotten because of this squabbling between petty politicians and petty people who deal in bonds. That's what this is all about. It is all about the money. The Germans, the EU, and the Greeks knew as early as 2004 during the Olympics that there was a possibility that this was going to fall apart and they were already talking about drachma and no one intervened from the right or from the left. And that's a big reason in my mind's eye why we have this situation today. And, and, I, and you have to bring humanity to what's going on in this situation in Greece. There's also, uh, the, the, on the point of the, all, all, being all about the money, uh, the Daily Telegraph's uh, business editor, Ambrose Evans Pritchard, reminds readers that uh, what you were saying in part one, that Germany got a much better deal uh, after World War II. He says that by demanding a budget viceroy for Greece and now an escrow account to seize Greek revenue at source, those are things that have been demanded, the merkel schäuble government has crossed a diplomatic line and brutalized EU politics. Memorandum macht frei, as one Greek newspaper splashed. Would Konrad Adenauer have made such a blunder? Konrad Adenauer, who is the chancellor of Germany after uh, World War II. And that brings us back to what you were saying in part one. Well, I think it's very important for politicians to remind Germans today um, that they got enormous help after World War II. It wasn't only the Marshall Plan, it was much more than that. Political help, financial help, economic help. Um, and so the international community was for very forgiving of the German crimes and tremendously helpful in allowing Germany to uh, e eventually go on a road which led it where it is today, you know, to economic success and prosperity and political stability. Uh, so again, um, helping a country that in that's in trouble should not be seen as something immoral, something outrageous. Um, the notion that you have to punish a, pro a country that's, that has you know, maneuvered itself into trouble is a, is a foolish one. It's, it's politically, economically foolish. It's also uh, very forgetful of what worked in the past, and Germans in particular um, should be the first to be conscious of that. In that sense, the, what the German opposition uh, politicians said really should be welcomed, because that, 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 that part of the equation is important. But it's not only about compassion. It's also about sensible, good politics. And uh, the other thing, of course, is that uh, for, in, in many ways, this is a test for what Europe can achieve. Um, one of its uh, constituent parts got into major trouble. Uh, does Europe have the means and the political will to uh, n manage that situation and to collectively move to a better future? Of course, you need a political interlocutor for that. And in Athens, otherwise you are... You are you All right, are, and for the time position. being, uh, we were saying during the break, there is no immediate solution. But for now, the rules are rules, the deal's a deal. French foreign minister also expressing compassion, but calling on the Greeks to respect their binding agreement to reform. The Greek government has taken its responsibilities very courageously, and the parliament as well. Some say there is a democracy gap. I would like to remind them, though, that the parliament embodies democracy by definition and legally supports the reforms. Do, uh, do you agree with that, Alexander Theodorakis? Uh, does the parliament embody uh, democracy in Greece? Of course not. Uh, it's it's been like that since uh, since the last thirty years. There's like four parties, 
the people have the right to talk every four years and uh, and express themselves through uh, through elections. But this is the 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 only time when we are given the right to to express ourselves. Apart from that, we just have the government's ruling for like the the the, t the two, three, four years, depending on the political situation. But no, it's not democratic at all, especially now when we have this uh, this. A, a, this new government uh, with a prime minister Lucas Papadimo that, that has not been elected by the people. They're so taking... what will you what will you be doing in April? Will you be voting or will you be boycotting the election? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna vote. There's nothing for me to to vote there. All right, but if you don't vote, does that uh, open the door to? Uh... No, I'm going to vote blank. I'm not I'm not I'm but going to is, I'm going to. What does that tell us? You know, what does that tell us? We are witnessing it's, the collapse of a democratic state in Europe. It's not a democratic state. Well, this it was a very a interesting, very, very interesting statement huh? that Greece at present is not a democratic state. Uh, a very, not. very interesting and revealing statement. So we are dealing, according to uh, this very significant and important voice of a le very legitimate protester, we are dealing with a um, state which is, has no democratic legitimacy. Let's keep that on even record. Though, even though it has right. elections, even though the, de the mechanisms of its democracy are highly suspect, it is still a democratic state in that if enough of the citizens wanted to go out with Stratis Strategis or any of the other people down there who have been talking about a new party for years and get behind them, yes, Greece, is still, a Greece is still a democratic state. But you don't see the will for this. I think you're making a very important point there. If you've got a significant citizens movement voting a new party, maybe not right into office or into power straight away, but a new party that, that becomes a significant voice in the, in the Greek mm -hmm. parliament, that would, that would show the way forward and would, if I may say, would be more constructive, I think, uh, than, you know, a blank Precisely. vote. Because Greek, Greek politics needs new political forces. Precisely. The Greens in Germany, you know, were, are a successful new political force, which emerged in a different situation. But when many people felt, young people, that the system was ossified, you know, you, maybe, maybe Greece needs something like uh, a Green, a new Green Party or some other new political right. movement. Those are, those, those are medium term to... solutions. Unfortunately, in the short run, we're out of time, but we will continue this discussion. I, I want to thank you, Marcus Kerber. I want to thank uh, Thomas Klau, Craig Kapitas, and also thank uh, Alexander Theodorakis for joining us uh, from Athens for the France 24 debate. Stay with us. Business is next. Uh, we'll be looking how the markets have uh, been reacting to that vote in the Greek parliament with Tom Burgess Watson. <laughs>